damning new details in the Trump classified documents probe. The Guardian's reporting Trump's lawyer was, quote, waved off from searching Trump's office for records, which was later where the FBI found the most sensitive materials. Noting several Trump aides told this lawyer, Evan Corcoran, to search the storage room where he found 38 classified documents. Corcoran then asked whether he should search anywhere else, but was steered away. I want to note that a Trump spokesperson denied that allegation, but we already know special counsel Jack Smith has been eyeing obstruction charges, and that does not look good for Donald Trump. New reports also depicting chaos on Trump's legal team. The Daily Beast reporting Trump's lawyers are starting to wonder if there might be a snitch. When is that? Snitches get stitches. One member of his legal team saying, quote, there's a lot of lawyers and a lot of jealousy. I wrote a piece on this for MSNBC.com, and I pointed out, quote, with Trump, you have the perfect storm of infighting lawyers jostling for pole position and a client who's prone to embracing the microphone and never meeting a camera he didn't love. I concluded, quote, it's a recipe for an attorney-client disaster. Trump is also reportedly eyeing revenge. Rolling Stone reporting Trump's team is, quote, scrambling to unmask the feds investigating him. Trump telling his allies if he becomes president again, he wants the DOJ to, quote, quickly and immediately purge the FBI and DOJ of the officials who led these probes. Joining me now is Hugo Lowell, political investigations reporter for The Guardian. He broke that story that we just reported. And Dave Ehrenberg, state attorney for Palm Beach County in Florida. Hugo, I'm going to start with you. What can you add to your great reporting about Evan Corcoran being steered away from searching Trump's personal office at Mar-a-Lago? Yeah, we know that the special counsel in this investigation... Uh, pierced the attorney-client privilege between Trump and the lawyer, Evan Corcoran, because he suspected uh, that Corcoran was misled uh, when he attested to the, to the Justice Department that he had fully complied with the subpoena and that there was no other classified documents remaining at Mar-a-Lago. And as we have uh, recently learned, uh, that appears to have been correct, because Evan basically told his associates that he was waved off from searching elsewhere at Mar-a-Lago, anywhere other than the storage room. So that's like Trump's office, the residence. And we know from the uh, FBI's inventory of what they seized at Mar-a-Lago when they went down months later with a search warrant, that the office was where the most highly sensitive documents were deposited. Dozens of top secret uh, and secret documents were found uh, either in Trump's desk drawer or in a leather-bound box. And so the fact that Evan was not given the opportunity or was basically steered away from looking in the office becomes really important in the obstruction investigation, like you said. And this is not an accident. This was him deliberately being told, don't go to the office. It's just sufficient to look in the storage room. And we think, you know, based on our reporting, that that is material, that is a material misleading statement. Yeah, but Hugo, I'm going to stay with you for just a second. You also reported, quote, it wasn't clear who waved off Corcoran from searching elsewhere at Mar-a-Lago, whether it was Trump himself or Trump employees who advised him to look for classified documents in the storage room. I mean, Hugo, isn't that important, though, for special counsel Jack Smith to know who was telling Corcoran where to look and the timing of when he was told to look? Yeah, and, you know, we have an account, basically, of what Evan Corcoran told associates. You know, he was effectively complaining that he had been misled, and he was lamenting the fact that the search should have been better because it placed him and Trump in a lot of uh, potential legal uh, jeopardy. It is true, we don't know who waved Evan off, and kind of we continue to learn more details about what transpired at Mar-a-Lago uh, this time last year. And, of course, if it was Trump who told Evan not to search in specific places— that would be as clear evidence of obstruction as I think you could get. It's not clear, though, that that's the case. You know, when Evan was told to look in the storage room, for instance, he was told by other employees uh, at Mar-a-Lago, people who were familiar where things had been deposited at the end of the administration. Um, so we don't know exactly who told him where to look, but the fact that generally he was steered away from where the most highly sensitive, the most highly classified documents were kept, we think is, is, is particularly important to the investigation. Dave, let's talk about people in the know. Mm -hmm. um, we mentioned that there's reporting that 
there's infighting on the Trump lawyer team. And I want to focus on this for a second with you. The Daily Peace has reported that, Beast, excuse me, has reported much of the anger from Trump's lawyers is directed at the former president's right-hand man, Boris Epstein, who's accused of running interference on certain legal advice from more experienced courtroom gladiators. Let's talk about attorney-client privilege, because I think this is really important. Hugo just talked about the fact that there were these 50 pages of notes mm -hmm. that were done by Evan Corcoran. The attorney-client privilege is pierced. But walk me through this a little bit. If it's not Donald Trump, if he's relying on Boris to be able to tell somebody like Evan Corcoran where to look, mm -hmm. do you truly still have an attorney-client relationship there? Because I feel like you wouldn't have had a piercing of attorney-client privilege if it didn't involve Trump in some way. Yeah, no, this is all going towards Donald Trump. That's why the greatest threat to Trump's future freedom is in the Mar-a-Lago documents case, because there is a direct tie between Trump and the alleged criminality there. That's why they're able to pierce attorney-client privilege, because there's a crime fraud exception. And the thinking is that Trump used his lawyers to facilitate a crime. And so, yeah, they can try to blame it on Borsch Epstein. He's an easy target. But at the end of the day, these lawyers are quitting for a reason, I think, other than personalities. I think they worry about being prosecuted themselves. And also, Trump's a tough uh, client to have. I mean, the lawyer uh, sent a letter, Evan Corcoran, excuse me, uh, Paula Tour sent a letter to Congress saying Trump didn't pack the documents himself. He had no dirty hands. It was his staff who did it. And then Trump went on that town hall and said, no, I did it. I'm the one who did it. Here it is. And so that's why I think that they're so frustrated with Trump. And instead, they're just blaming it on an, all on Boris Epstein. Mm, I think they're trying to cover for Trump. But can Trump invoke that as a legal defense? If Jack Smith comes after him, can he say, don't look at me. I didn't tell the FBI, the DOJ, where things are. I didn't tell Evan Corcoran where to look. That was Boris's fault, or that's Evan's fault. That's what he's going to say. Like, I'm not the one who said this. But then, if the reports are right, that he's the one who told his valet, Nada, Walt Nada, to move the documents before and after the subpoena, oh, that's a one-way ticket to the Huskow. I mean, that is really bad for Donald Trump. Plus, he's the one who keeps saying the documents are mine. And so it's his own words. I think they're going to get Donald Trump in trouble. I don't think he can just blame this on lawyers that he had nothing to do with. These are his people. These are his words and his directives. Yeah, so Hugo, I mean, Ari himself has spoken with Boris Epstein on the beat before. Boris has admitted to being a part of the fake electors plot, the potentially illegal plot that is currently part of the Georgia criminal probe, as well as, frankly, the Jack Smith investigation. Let's take a quick listen. I was part of the process to make sure there were alternate electors for when, as we hoped, the challenges to the seated electors would be heard and would be successful part of the 12th Amendment of the Constitution and the Electoral Count Act. Everything that was done was done illegally by the Trump legal team, by, according to, to the rules and under the leadership of, of Rudy Giuliani. I kind of had to, like, take a listen. Did he just say it was done illegally under the leadership <laughs> of the Trump legal team? Hugo, is this the kind of lawyer that you want to be quarterbacking your legal team and organizing your legal defenses when he admits uh, to something that doesn't sound legal to me, to Ari Melber on live TV? I mean, aside from what Boris is saying himself, I mean, we know that Boris Epstein is the subject, at least, of multiple criminal investigations. You know, he went and sat... Uh, for an interview with the special counsel in the January 6th investigation. He went and testified to the Fulton County District Attorney's investigation in Georgia examining election interference there. He is a subject, potentially a defendant, in multiple criminal investigations, and he is currently representing, as the in-house counsel, in his own words, the president, the former president, who himself is the subject, if not the target, of these same criminal investigations. So it is rather astonishing that you have a lawyer whose own interests may not actually align with his clients, and yet he's continued to be a trusted advisor and continues to be uh, the point person for the legal team. And I think that is partly why uh, some of the lawyers have been so frustrated uh, with having to go through Boris, have been so frustrated with having to deal with him uh, as the point person. I think, as you know, David said, you know, this is going to be an issue going forward, especially if these cases lead to indictments. You know, David, it's not just having Boris gatekeeping access to Donald mm -hmm. Trump when you're the lawyer. Let's talk about what I wrote in my piece, which is how do you quarterback this many lawyers? I'm kind of stuck on this idea. So Alina Hava had to make an affirmative representation to a judge in the New York attorney general's case about her searching for production of documents that had to be compliant with a court order. She certified to this judge, I looked at Ben Minster, I looked at Mar-a-Lago, I looked at all these locations to search for these particular documents. And yet the timing of it would have coincided with the turning over or the requirement of turning over of classified documents found at Mar-a-Lago. Then you have Evan Corcoran using Christina Bob. Right. 
right, to be able to say, I, you know, have turned over everything to the best of my knowledge. How does this create a serious problem for all of the lawyers that are involved in the Trump legal team? Yeah. Also, at the beginning of this, Trump relied on a judicial watch lawyer, a right winger, to say, you have the right to keep those documents. They're yours and not the government's. Bad advice. So Trump's perhaps last remaining defense is saying, I just was relying on advice of counsel. It's not a good defense. Or that there was such chaos that they did it, I didn't. But now Evan Corcoran has been forced to testify before the grand jury, and I'm sure he told the truth and said it was Trump who told me to do it. And all these lawyers are turning on each other. But Trump doesn't just delegate to other people. These decisions are too important. You know he's the one involved, and ultimately all roads lead back to the former president. Well, let's talk about written corroboration before we got to go. So you've got 50 notes from Evan Corcoran. You and I are lawyers. Um, I may not be practicing anymore, but I can tell you this. When I had a case, it was complex. I took notes about the facts, et cetera. But these are not just regular notes that Evan Corcoran's doing. These are CYA notes from Evan Corcoran. How unusual is it to have 50 pages of notes by a lawyer about what is happening? And I'm not talking just, oh, Dave, my client told me, you know, this is what it is. It's I sat by the pool. It was this date. There could have been people that went and moved boxes. I don't know. Yeah, you know that Evan Corcoran is trying to CYA in many different respects. Remember the letter that he signed saying, yeah, all the documents have been returned. He refused to sign the letter. He got Christina Bob to, yeah, sign, to it. sign it. Never a good idea if you're a lawyer uh, to sign a letter you didn't write yourself. And the person who, who wrote it won't sign it himself. So, yeah, I think uh, in this case, you're seeing all these lawyers trying to point the finger at each other. They're all in trouble. That's why they say that MAGA stands for making attorneys get attorneys. Yeah. I think that's true.